Once in a while, you hear a story you just can't stop thinking about. I heard a great one at World Seed Congress. It's got science, failure, perseverance, and a gene that just wouldn't quit. So I pulled the man with the story in front of a camera so you can hear it too. This one's worth a listen. So back in 2010, yes. 2010, okay, uh, researcher patented a new gene for sweet corn. The intermediary gene. Yeah, okay. SH2I. Uh, known, uh, known very well in corn breeding circles, but maybe not quite as much by the whole corn industry. Am I right? Yeah, that is very right. Okay. So his feeling was that it would be a game changer for the sweet corn industry. And a lot of people got excited about it. Yeah? Yes. So everybody jumps into trying to make this work. And what happens? It failed in the market. A lot of companies like ourselves, we failed as well. Okay. There was one company that jumped out ahead of everybody else and moved really too quick. Okay. And it failed in the market. Okay, it so helped. fail, fail, fail. Like fail, this. fail, fail. So, so all of the promise of this gene, fail, 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 didn't work at all. Correct. And so the marketplace says, that's a dud, we'll move on. You guys... Don't say that. You say, but we think there's something there. Yes. So you keep working on it. And am I correct in saying you yourself put a decade into this and then one of your colleagues at your company put another decade into it? Correct. And in fact, the gene does have the promise that that researcher hoped. Yes. Okay. So what was the issue that it was fail, 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 and then suddenly you hit success. What did it take? So we had to put it in the right genetic background, which is okay. not comparing it or uh, putting it with another gene. It's a series of genes. And once we figured that out, we realized that we had the right genetics to move forward with it. But there was another hurdle ahead. The marketplace remembered the SH2I gene's early failure and had such a poor impression of it that it wasn't marketable, despite all the benefits. When we started coming out with product, our first one was a variety called Nirvana. We kept it secret for about five, six years okay. because it still had a bad image out there with uh, the seed dealers we work with and the farmers we work with. Over the next few years, several of their most popular varieties happened to be varieties that quietly included that SH2I gene. Finally, having collected piles of evidence of the gene's success, they started telling customers. And when growers or dealers said, you know, we've been through this I gene, it doesn't work, why are you taking us down this path? And our response was quite simple. And that was, you love the variety Nirvana. Oh, yes. The I gene's in Nirvana. Oh, what? The I gene is in Nirvana. You're kidding me. No. Look at the seed. So what does the SH2I gene actually deliver? That I gene, what it brings to the table is it's not a silver bullet, but it gives that seed a little bit more endosperm. So when it comes time for planting, it makes it more plantable. When it comes time for emergence in cold soils and uniformity, it has a great benefit there as well, too. It's not a silver bullet. But in the seed industry, uh, every little bit helps. So if we can take you from a seven and a half to a, to a nine on the scale of 10, that's an improvement. A uh, huge improvement. Correct. Okay, so take me back to the, the moment when you, you've, put in all this work, your colleague has put in all this work, and you realize it actually works. Yes. What was that like? Yeah, that's a hard emotion to capture. It was very exciting. It would be very exciting. Uh, we, and when we first took a bite of it, we went, okay, the quality's there. In fact, it exceeds the quality than we, uh, we anticipate. But then knowing how the IG works, we said, now is it going to hold in the field? Because that was the problem with the IG. Right. So we kept coming back. We kept coming back, you know, day after day after day. And then we learned that it actually kept longer in the field than we anticipated and longer in the field than the non SH2I varieties. So even better even than you better. had actually, actually even, hoped. Yes. Okay. 
So then the next step is you've got this thing that you know it works and you know that it's not got the best market image. So you have to kind of sit on it for a little while. But how frustrating is that? It was very frustrating, but we love the, the quality of the Ravana yeah. enough that that was a win unto itself. Okay. Okay. Because we improved the quality, not only the seed quality, but the eating quality. Right. So that was enough to itself. But then as we went forward and had proof of concept, you know, we came up with Solstice and Equinox, Nirvana, Eden, and now we got Golden Halo. And then we had a whole series. Then we went, okay, it's time to revisit this SH2I. Right. And it was, it was a little nerve wracking. But as I told you, it's beautiful to be able to come back and go, okay, you love Nirvana. You've loved it for six years. Have you ever had a problem? And the answer is, well, no. Okay, so now that you're rolling it out to, to Marketplace and you're rolling it out openly, yes. what's uptake like? Uh, it was a little unnerving, uh, but here in this last year, sales are up on the SH2I by 40%. 40%. And, All right. And, okay. and people are starting to understand its value and they're slowly getting over their concerns of eight years ago, yeah. approximately. Yeah. So it's fun to watch that ship turn. <laughs>